All right, so here is our history review for the week. It says, why, did, why didn't the South want Abraham Lincoln to become president? Because he wanted to build factories in the South? The people of the South believed he would eventually end slavery? He wanted the Southern states to secede from the United States? The people of the South believed he was a poor speaker. None of these are true except for this one right here. The people of the South believed he would eventually end slavery. One month after Abraham Lincoln became president, the Civil War began. He gave the Gettysburg Address. The Civil War ended or the South, the South surrendered. It would be A, the Civil War began. Number three, read the following phrase from the Gettysburg Address conceived in liberty and dedicated to the proposition that all men are created equal. What does the word proposition mean? Does it mean a way to declare war, an official declaration to end the war, an idea to be thought about, a, to lessen the importance of something? It would be C an idea to be thought about. I made a proposition to the class about having lunch at Spooky's. Among all the battlefields of the Civil War, why did President Lincoln speak at the battlefield at Gettysburg? Was it because A, people wrote to the president and requested he speak there? B, it was where the battle was that ended the war? C, it was where President Lincoln's hometown was, or D, it was being dedicated as a national cemetery. D, it was where the battle, it was where the battle was that ended the war. They did dedicate the cemetery, but it's not um, why he went there. He went there because it was where the battle was that ended the war. Number five. What happened after Lincoln's speech that day in 1863? The Civil War officially ended? Nope. The Battle of Gettysburg began? Nope. The war continued for another year and a half, or the South decided to surrender. Oh, sorry. I said no. Yes, the Civil War officially ended the day um, after Lincoln's speech. Six. What is the author's purpose? I'm sorry, that's not right. I am totally all over the place. Ah. Um, I was right, it was not B. I was spacing D and then five. It was not, the Civil War did not end there. Oh my God. That's so bad. <laughs> I'm not even paying attention. I'm so sorry. It was the war continued for a year and a half. I was like, it did not end. That's not right. What is it talking about? The author's purpose for writing this book is to mess with your teacher's head. No. Is it to explain the Gettysburg Address within the context of the Civil War? Is it to describe what slavery means? Nope. To help readers understand the Civil War strategy. They didn't talk about that to persuade readers that the South should have won. Nope, so it's A, to explain the Gettysburg Address within the context of the Civil War. And I'm sure, I'm sorry. Why did Edward Everett speak at Gettysburg? He represented the South, nope. He wanted to run for president, nope. He was a popular and well-known speaker, yep. He had fought in the Battle of Gettysburg. Nope. So C. 
When Lincoln spoke of the great task ahead, what did he mean? Did he mean starting the Civil War? Writing the Gettysburg Address? Getting reelected for president or ending slavery? And yes, we know it's ending slavery. Read the sentence. Although only 10 sentences long, the Gettysburg Address is considered one of the most inspiring speeches in American history. What does inspiring mean? Does inspiring mean rousing people to violence? Encouraging people to act? Comforting people who are sad? Are humorous and making people laugh? B, encouraging people to act. Next, which of the following would be considered an opinion? More men died at Gettysburg than any other Civil War battle. President Lincoln was not the only speaker at Gettysburg battlefield. Which of these following would be considered an opinion? The Gettysburg Address is the most inspiring speech of all time. There are five different versions of the Gettysburg Address. Only one of these is an opinion, and it is C. It is the most inspiring speech of all time. That is your opinion. Number 11. I'm going to put the answer to 11 up here. Explain in your own words why the Battle of Gettysburg was so important. So in the story, they talk about more soldiers died there and people were sad about this this was just people were wanted the war to end people wanted the war to be done um and then the other thing is in the story he talks about how um he says that it he talks about how they weren't defeated but how they were beat. So the Confederates admit a loss at Gettysburg. Okay. More soldiers died there, I should say, than any other battle field. Okay. And number 12. Do you think such great such a great speech can inspire people even all people of a nation to change their thinking and their actions. Well, okay, first of all, can inspire people, even all people of a nation, to think and change their actions. Um, well, I think it can get people to think not all people will ever feel the same way. Um, some people don't want to change, even if it's wrong. Even if what they do hurts others, hurts other people. 
Some people don't care and you can't, there's no amount of speech that you could give them. So do you think a great speech can, a great speech can do this for some people? And that's important. All right, if you've got those, you've got that done for history. Nice work.